Is there any hope? Are there other solutions? And I believe the answer to those questions is a resounding yes. The development of an actual popular movement, an anti-genocide movement, slowly but steadily, the creation of this people's movement. And, and, and why that's important is that, in my perspective, what has changed the course of human history, uh, especially in this country? And it is, without a doubt, uh, just the, the, the oppressive waves of injustice have crashed on our shores and the shores around the world. What has changed the course of history over and over again are organized people's movements. The, uh, and domestically, we have the examples that all of us know, the civil rights movement, the women's movement, the, the, the trade union movement, the environmental movement, the peace movement, the LBGT movement. And uh, internationally, Americans, especially students, and by the way, every one of those students were in the vanguard of those social changes. And you have the same phenomenon in international uh, uh, efforts where the anti-apartheid movement to bring an end to South African apartheid and the Blood Diamonds movement and other kinds of efforts like that have made, have helped bring about change in other parts of the world when particularly young people got interested and engaged in, in, in injustice, in countering or stopping an injustice and being part of the global effort to try and bring an end to that injustice. This is about generating and sustaining political will. That's what people's movements are about. Often for these social problems, there just isn't the kind of political will necessary to take serious policy action. So politicians, policymakers need to be pushed, shoved, nudged, cajoled into doing more. And that's where these people's movements come in. Samantha Power's book, The Problem from Hell, which is the sort of classic book on genocide, won a Pulitzer Prize. The premise of that book is very simple. There will be no response to problems like genocide without a constituency of conscience. There will be no action taken uh, if there's no cost for inaction. And that's true. That's the basic supply and demand of our political system. Why would it be any different for human rights concerns or any of the concerns that any of you share out in the audience? And at the, at, the, at the heart of those people's movements have been students, as I said, but there are also other constituencies that when they band together and create unusual coalitions, these people's movements have made uh, light year uh, forward leaps uh, in bringing about solutions.